everyone, I hope you're doing so well and welcome to this little video all about the oil paintings I'm working on this week. Thank you so much for your amazing comments on my last video, I truly appreciate it. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you are new. So, uh, there will be a little chat at the end of this video, uh, just some funny questions and answers. And also, thank you so much to everyone who has favourited my shop, my Etsy store and bought paintings for me. Once again, I'm so, so grateful and I will leave a link to my Etsy store below. I literally just banged my knee. <laughs> I confess, so I may be injured, but I'm going on. I'm not really actually injured, but I seem to always like either stub my toe or bang my knee just before I'm about to film, and this time I banged my knee. The first painting I'd like to show you is of this rabbit who is on a mysterious journey, and it absolutely loves to travel through forests and on mountains, and this time it's on a special quest. And in its search, on, on its quest, it uh, is sort of looking for somewhere to stay the night. So it finally finds this little house in a tree and some bunny rabbits living inside potentially. And so this piece is actually um, nearly finished in fact. I have one more layer to go just to go on, just to do sort of lots and lots of details. Uh, but it won't be too long because I'll just be sort of working in that one final layer. And so I do hope you like it. It's been quite a long time in progress. So the next painting I'd like to show you is of a um, frog. Um, what's in here? Another frog. This frog is particularly intellectual and actually um, partly was inspired by once again this kind of autumn landscape and also this idea of basically being a bookworm and when I was a kid I personally was uh, a bookworm. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just apologising for my squeaky chair. It's like always groaning in protest. Um, I ate too many pies. It's go racing its way through a number of very large and very large books and in fact uh, has its sort of reading glasses on. I, when a kid, I when I was a kid, <laughs> was an absolute bookworm. My head was always buried in a book and my favourite place was to go to the library, the local library, and I would get out as many books as I possibly could. The librarian, in fact, from my local library um, hated me because <laughs> once or twice I gave the books back overdue and um, she just shouted at me and I was only a little kid and so I used to therefore detest her. It was never that overdue, she was just overly dramatic. This frog is not letting anyone take his books away and he is, you know, really going for it in the, once again, undergrowth. Here we have Mr Badger analysing some stamps. This is a stamp collecting badger. What gave me the idea of this, I'm sure you can guess if you're from England, is that unfortunately at the moment our stamps are being ended. They're being, they're being phased out in favour of barcodes, which is actually to me a tragedy. I do understand that it's so much easier for the post office to process sort of barcodes and things, but so many people collect stamps and uh, there are so many unique ones out there. I think some of them have the most incredible designs and it really does remind me so much of old correspondence where people used to send letters as opposed to using the internet. So I absolutely love technology and I couldn't be without it. But at the same time, there is part of me that just longs for that old time where people would pour their heart out in a letter and then there's that anticipation waiting for it to be sent. So in this painting this badger is in fact a stamp collector, hopefully you can see here, and he is basically looking through letters on his doorstep and trying to see if he can sort of looking on the envelopes and seeing if he can find sort of rare stamp that he is going to collect. And this is obviously just in the first area and I haven't even finished this part. So finally we have an underpainting again. Uh, this has actually been drying for quite some time, it's nearly dry. So very, uh, very much ready for the next layer of colour. And this is all about a fox. I'm going to put it right close to the camera so you can see. This is a fox who loves to go fishing, has its own boat and its own sort of little alcove and uh, also likes reading books, is very intellectual, collects treasure, but most of it's sort of books and these are all about travel, so travelling, sea travel, so this is a book that 
a book, a fox that likes to go sailing. Um, obviously I will keep updating you with what they look like. Hopefully next week I'll have made a lot of progress and um, I've really been enjoying this woodland theme and I hope to paint lots more woodland creatures and woodland scenes. I've got so many ideas actually at the moment I kind of went through a block for a while but I think it's over so fingers crossed. Now onto some funny questions. Oh gosh I think my battery is dying as usual but we will at least try some anyway. So first of all, um, what is the weirdest item you keep under your bed? <laughs> Well, and actually this is, I don't know if this is weird, but my violin that is broken, as in it has two broken strings, is under my bed. The reason being, I keep hoping that I'll wake up in the middle of the night and suddenly grab my violin and start playing again. I haven't played for years. The inspiration has not taken me yet because I still haven't done it but you know sometimes I sit up in bed and I like start to pretend to play sort of get myself in the mood and then I look underneath my bed I look at my violin and I'm like actually it's better in the box um in actual fact rather the case you can tell I haven't played for a long time also I can't really play it because it has two strings so I could play like a very basic piece. <laughs> what is a movie that scared, scarred you for life when you were a kid? Uh, well, Nightmare on Elm Street scared me so much and there's something about Freddy Krueger with the claw and <laughs> clawed hand that just freaked me out and even now when I see the poster I'm always like, you know, on edge. If you had a pet parrot, what would you teach it to say? I would teach the pet parrot to sing and I would teach it to sing opera and I'd put it near the door, the front door, so anytime anyone walked in it would just be like ah! or something and just scare people so much. Next question, if you could make the ultimate sandwich, what would be on it? I would put mustard on it. Obviously I wouldn't put mustard by itself, but I've become recently so obsessed with mustard. There is no reasoning behind this. Well, I've always liked it, but uh, I stopped liking it once I went to a fairground and I was about to go on a really scary ride, <laughs> a water ride, and I ordered a hot dog. <laughs> and the guy asked me, do you want something like double mustard on it? And I was too scared to say no. So I just said, yes, please, because that's the way you do things. If you're British, you're too scared to really speak your mind. You just always say, yes, please. Yes, thank you. So I said yes, and he put so much mustard on it. I was walking up the stairs to go into the scare, go to the scary ride, and I started to eat the hot dog, and um, it was like my whole face was burning because <laughs> the mustard was so strong. And uh, after that, I got put off uh, mustard and scary rides for quite some time. But now I'm back. I love mustard again and I'm putting it on everything but the thing is I don't really like it strong and I, I hardly put any but the ultimate sandwich for me it has to have mustard tomatoes because I'm obsessed with tomatoes can't live without them I am like I was Italian in another life I think because I just eat tomatoes every second of the day and uh, avocado and every single vegetable on earth as well because I love vegetables. Vegetable sandwich and possibly some chicken if there's space. If you were ruler of the world who would be your top advisor? Mickey Mouse of course. Next question, if you could go into space would you? <laughs> would you go into space? If the part of getting into space was just skipped out magically, like if you can actually just like get in some sort of lift, elevator and then just choom, be like zoomed up into space in one second without having any conscious feeling of motion, then yes, I would adore the idea of going into space and walking around in a spacesuit and I find space absolutely fascinating. Uh, however, going up in a rocket, if, if I couldn't be transported just like that, I going up in a rocket would not be my idea of fun. I almost have a breakdown every time I'm about to board a plane. So I imagine a rocket would be a million times more terrifying and um, physically affecting. <laughs> I have a question because my battery is running out. Ah! 
If you wore one, what did your prom dress look like at school? I, if you wore one, I did wear one fortunately. Um, I uh, made my own prom dress, of course. Sounds so impressive, but actually it isn't because my it actually pretty much almost fell apart by the end of the night. I just remember so clearly in my mind this big hole down the side, the side of my dress that was actually being held together by a safety pin. And there were times when I was dancing around where I just actually had to hold the side of my dress so it didn't all come crashing open or down or whatever. I was sewing the dress the night before, so like 2am or something, desperately trying to get it finished. Uh, some of it was great in terms of the structure, but some of it was, as I say, non-existent. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you are new, and I will see you soon. Take care, guys.